What's up, guys? Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com. Let's kick it. What we have here today is another subwoofer from Kicker, aka Stillwater Designs. This is an early 90s free air subwoofer. And you might say, well, why would they call it a free air subwoofer? You wouldn't just want to sit it on the table and play it, right? No, what they actually meant by free air was infinite baffle, meaning it didn't need a box, but it did need a way to um, separate the air from the front and the rear so you just put it like on uh you know in a back seat of a sedan and have it so the magnet was just firing toward the back of the car and the speakers themselves were insulated into the interior uh, cabin that way it would use your entire trunk as an enclosure the kicker free air sub we're showing off today is the f12 model and just wanted to show you we have the old style terminals there don't really like those but that's just the way a lot of the old school subs were uh, it's got a two inch voice coil it's a single four ohm and i'll flip it over so you can see the bottom here you can see free air f12 four ohms has a 38 ounce magnet which is the same as the, um, the Solibaric 8 inch that you may have seen in a different video of mine. Stamp steel basket. Um, nothing really a whole lot else to it. It's got the vented uh, pole piece there. And uh, yeah, not a whole lot else to it. Flip it back over and show you. This one may have had the surrounds replaced because most of the kickers at the time had stitched surrounds and I don't notice that these are stitched so these surrounds may have been replaced what I'll do now is show you a brochure from 1992 that has some specs on the F12 free air subwoofer as you can see it has a 400 watt maximum power input rating uh, you can see the sensitivity and the 38 ounce magnet and you can see the other specs there on your screen and here for reference again we have a july august 1992 car stereo review this is a buyer's guide and i'll flip it to the section where we have stillwater designs aka kicker and you can see there's the f12 the two inch captain voice coil 30 ounce magnet it says 250 watts here that's continuous um, there's all the other specs and 149 dollars was msrp back in 1992. and just for comparison's sake here i brought out a around a 2002 or so model uh, punch hx2 by rockford fosgate just wanted to show you sort of the difference in 10 years of advancements here obviously right off the bat the thing we really like is these push terminals that makes it so much easier to hook up your speakers and having to use the little spade terminals to hook these up obviously the motor slash magnet huge difference um you know this the kicker is a two inch voice coil the kicker i mean the rockford is a three inch this one also has the uh, cast aluminum basket versus the stamp steel um, a lot more throw here for the um, for the voice coil some extra cooling in here as well obviously much higher power speaker here capable of much more output but um you know it just kind of shows you what happens over the years with subwoofers back in 92 these right here were pretty impressive so 
it's just the advancements and that's what i want to do here on my channel a lot is talk about you know the history of car audio not necessarily saying that the old school subs are the best i'm just showing you what we used to use back in the day compare it to some of the new stuff all right, I know how much you guys like to see demos. I kind of do too when I watch other channels. So I figured why not just go ahead and hook this joker up. Got the Matt's D200 here, feeding a four ohm signal to the one of the free airs. Um, probably around 300, 350 watts, something like that. So nice power. I did unfortunately find out that one of these subs doesn't work. So one of them will just be a display piece, which it is beautiful. So. We'll uh, power up this one, which actually needs a little bit of the cork replaced, but um, let's check it out, see what it does. All right, guys, there you have it. My quick review here of the Kicker F12 4 ohm subwoofers from approximately 1992. You can see here, pretty good example of those subs from that time. Somebody's taking really good care of these. Too bad one of them doesn't work, but hey, that's how it is. They're old speakers and old subs especially. They usually don't last this long. And the fact that one of them still works is still pretty cool. So these are uh, sort of relics here. Maybe go in the old school stereo museum one day. This is Big D Wiz, oldschoolstereo.com. Until next time, I'm out of here.